greetings, well met, etc. What is the secret to achieving the right historical silhouette? If you said underpinnings, you are entirely correct. So, I'm going to be trying my hand at a 1920s bra because in the 1920s, the chest area needed to be as flat as possible in order for the dresses to fall well. Kate from The Long Hair Flapper, which is a really nice YouTube channel that covers a lot of beauty routines, hair and makeup stuff from the late Victorian age to, uh, I think about the 1920s, maybe 1930s. I don't really remember very well, sorry. Anyway, she has a really nice channel. Go check it out, uh, particularly her video on making a 1920s bra because this, this here video is a reaction to that video. So I very much recommend you first check out her video. I shall link it here. And then you come back over to my channel and you watch this video because this is my answer to Kate's question when she made the video. She asked herself, is this tutorial also for the somewhat bustier girls? Well. Friends, after years of breastfeeding, I don't know how much of a busty girl I still am. I used to have like a D cup. I used to be like, and now I'm like, yeah, I used to be cup D, now I'm cup of tea. Ah, so hot. Anyway, I'm going to try out her tutorial for the slightly bustier girl. She says she's somewhere in, in the B cup range. Well, I don't know where I am, sorry. But I think I am definitely larger than a B cup. So I'm gonna try this for all you busty-er girls out there, if it works. So, stay tuned. Kate's tutorial says to cut a rectangular piece of fabric that measures 8 inches by whatever your loose bust measurements is, plus 1 inch. I measured out the 8 inches on the fabric, but instead opted to measure the width directly onto my body, and this worked fine for me. In her tutorial, Kate used ribbons for bra straps, but since this bra is meant for a bigger chest, I decided to make them out of the self fabric. I did this for reasons of comfort, as it seemed to me that ribbons can really dig into your shoulders if they need to carry a lot of weight. However, since this bra smooshes more than lifts, I think you could probably make them with ribbons too, even if you're a bit on the bustier side. So I pinned on the hooks and eyes, tried it on, it's a little bit too roomy but that might not be a problem because I want to hide these a little bit better so I'm going to tuck them into the fabric a little bit if that makes sense there like this also on this side so I'm just gonna pin them in place try it on again and see if it fits and otherwise I'll just have to shorten it a little bit more that's what I'm talking about this right now is pretty damn awful it's squashing my boobs all the way down, but that is kind of the point, I guess. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to hem this, I'm going to make some darts, pin down the darts, and then try it on again, see if the fit has improved. Don't think 
there ain't no Santa Claus. I know darn well there is because my cutie's due at two to two today. It fits. Now for the darts that are hopefully going to make the difference for us slightly busty-er girls. I use the tried and true method of eyeballing it, using the grain of the fabric as a guideline. But you want to maybe be smart and mark out the middle before you start the fitting. I use the middle as a central marker point to make sure the darts were in the same place on each side and then even them out. you can see lots of <laughs> smushage smushage is that even a word Sm it is now I invented it smushage lots of smushage going on here which is nice which is what we want for the 1920s it, it's just so inherently different from any other bra I've ever worn this this smushing down it really takes some getting used to. It's just so counterintuitive for some reason. It, the thing is when you're still breastfeeding, sometimes your boobs are different sizes because one has decided to start making a little bit more milk and then the other one's like, ah, no, it can't be bothered. So yeah, that's a, that's a thing. Anyway, I made this to be pretty even and right now it doesn't feel like my boobs are even. Even, even. Anyway, you see, as you can tell, I've pretty much followed Kate's instructions to the letter, almost, I think. Except that I've made these little darts here and here. And that's making the difference between it just being sort of like a sheath, because then I would just have this just, you know, that wouldn't feel right. I imagine if you're a smaller size, it would be fine. This overhang here, it's not very flattering, but then again, no one's gonna see it. And it does need to be tight for the smushage to happen. So, yeah. Not very elegant, but gets the job done, I guess. Let's try it on over a 1920s style dress.
this is not exactly the most flattering bra I own, it is definitely key in achieving a more accurate 1920s silhouette with which I am well pleased. Many thanks to Kate for producing a wonderful tutorial, and if you like this video, feel free to stick around, and I'll see you next time. Bye!